the card. Okay, so last week we discussed a very important sloka 47. Karmanyavadi Karaste Motaleshu Kadachana very powerful words. What does this mean? You have a right to perform your prescribed duty. All of us have adhikar. What is the adhikar? To do our duties as a, you know, you as an employee or as a, as a politician or as a doctor, whatever may be our duty as a mother, we have certain duties to perform. And that is our right. Our right is to perform our duty. But we are not entitled to the fruits of action. Meaning we should not be concerned about the fruits that we get. Sometimes you may get good results. Sometimes you may get bad results. But we are not entitled. Means there is no guarantee that you would get a specific fruit. So what does this mean? When you perform your duty, you should not think about what result we should not be focused on the result. The you know then the focus would the mind would be running around the fruit, not on the proper execution of duty, isn't it? When you are you know working on a complicated problem, is it not better to have your focus on the work itself rather than uh, if you are consumed by the work itself or if you are completely absorbed in the work itself? Look at the quality of the work instead of looking at what kind of fruits am I getting? Then that's a distraction, isn't it? So it's never good to think about the fruits when we execute our duties. Secondly, never consider yourself to be the cause of the results of your activities. Don't think, oh, I am there. That is the reason you got these fruits. Never identify yourself with the results of your activities. For an activity to happen, we are just nimitta. Ultimately, you know, when you when you drive the car, you know, all of us drive car, cars. We all have the experience of driving the car. Do you really move the car? You just push a button, right? Accelerator. The car completely moves. The system moves by its own engine, right? So similarly, even if you want to lift your hand, don't think that you are, a, you are able to lift the hand. You as a soul, as a tiny soul, you just desired to lift the hand. If your karma permits, if you have enough karma to lift the hand, for example, somebody with, uh, um, you know, with, a, ha with a hand problem, say he had um, um, you know, Pakshavat or you know, some other disease, he may not lift the hand. He may not have the capability to lift the hand, even though he desires. So we desire God sanctions material energy to be lifted. That's how the hand gets lifted. So never consider that you are the primary doer. You are the doer of the, of the duties. Do not identify yourself as the doer of the duties. And never be attached to not doing your duty. Just because you are not the doer doesn't mean you become lazy and don't perform your duty. You have to perform your duty. And so you should not be attached to not doing your duty. Oh, some people say, oh, anyway, I'm not the doer, you know, ultimately God, God is the doer and it doesn't matter whether I do or not. No, we should not be lazy. We should be putting our best effort to perform our duty. So the whole point is we should perform our duties without any attachment. You are cooking. Uh, do not worry about the taste of the food. Just focus on how nicely would I, you know, would I cook dutifully, right? Am I putting all the ingredients properly? Just focus on that aspect. Then you, your outcome would naturally come out well. You don't, uh, uh, don't think about, oh, my husband may not like this or my mother doesn't like this. Or don't focus on the result itself. Then you would learn from the way you did and you perform better, right? Okay, any questions on this? This is a very powerful verse. So this is, this is called Nishkama Karma Yoga. Nishkama Karma Yoga means performing your duty without 
attachment to the fruits the the result of performing such duty is that you will be free from reaction so the, there is no reaction to such actions what is a reaction to action reaction to action means when you perform an activity you suppose you did a good activity say you donated some money to somebody okay he is in need and so you try to help now that is a satkarma satkarma means good activity naturally when you give there are various considerations in your mind you may think hey i am such a charitable person i you know uh, and uh, you know i am try- i am trying to really help people i am uh, you know i am fortunate to help others if you are thinking like that that is one way to think the second way to think is oh i am giving and people are noticing this so i am getting some name and fame by this should my name be displayed in the board as the biggest donor if your considerations are like that that is one another level of considerations the third level of consideration is hey by some good fortune i have this money but i am only a trustee for this you know this one lifetime is a short i would be giving up after this life you know i am i have i am not really the owner of the money i am just a trustee at this point and in my current situation i am comfortable to give others this donation without without jeopardizing my own life that is the third way of consciousness so these three levels of consciousness exist when somebody does this action the first is considering oneself as a you know as a very charitable person a very good human being identifying himself as the doer as the donor as the giver of donations though it is not bad that is still binding it is an action in mode of goodness action in mode of goodness means action considering uh, it is it is devoid of any passion uh, it is with good consideration but still there is identification with oneself as the doer right this third third thing so when that happens that person gets a reaction what is the kind of reaction he gets he gets a very good credit of good karma so in a future lifetime or in this lifetime we see you know suddenly somebody get becomes a billionaire as a 25 year old boy you know just like mark zuckerberg everybody thinks oh he is a computer nerd he got it no it is because his karma allowed him there is no other surprising reason for that why would anybody who is just a 25 year old would become a billionaire at for a you know building a nice website of course it is the push of his karma that brought him so he must have been charitable in his past lives nothing is coincidence or nothing is a random flow of luck there is nothing like that everything happens for a perfect reason so so that is mode of goodness it gives you good karma you might take birth in a very higher planetary systems uh, all these good karmas would lead you to you know a better destination or a better body it is good but still it is binding you know you still have to exhaust your good karma means you should enjoy the fruits of your good karma like you know mark jagar was is enjoying the fruits of his good karma right now right so he has to exhaust that so that is still binding meaning you still have to come to this middle world now the second one the second consideration is oh i am getting some name and fame by this yeah you get that name and fame but that is an action in the mode of passion passion means you are desiring strong fruits if you don't get name and fame you don't want to donate also so that is uh, that is uh, a little lower than the previous one you won't get such great reaction you know, good you would still get good karma but still not at the degree of the first level again that good karma is binding you again have to come back to this world third is dispassionate dispassionately donating as a trustee of wealth right so in this consideration 
you are not attached to the you know you are not thinking yourself as a big donor you are just giving because you know you have extra surplus money and you don't want name and fame some of these people want to donate anonymously some of these rich people just you know i i remember they go to tirupati hundi and they drop a you know a, like a 1 kg of gold they don't want to give to anybody they want to give to god and at the same time they don't want their name to be coming out so that is more or less like uh, nishkama karma yoga means you are not you are not really concerned about the fruits of the action that you did that is non binding meaning it does not bind you to the material world higher than nishkama karma yoga is bhakti yoga where one considers krishna as the benefactor of your actions i do i not only give the charity i also make sure it helps the person to advance spiritually like you may uh, instead of giving money you may give him something that brings him close to krishna like uh, instead of giving money you can give uh, you know give him a job where he can have enough time to attend satsang programs or uh, you know many ways you can give him prasadam uh, instead of giving 2 rupees in a train you can give him prasadam by eating prasadam uh, that person gets slowly connected to god so that's called for him it's called um, sukruti sukruti means unknowingly doing devotion service eating prasadam is also a devotion service by which also one advances spiritually so you can help him spiritually that is the highest that is bhakti yoga so you see the four levels of actions you can act in the mode of goodness you can act in the mode of passion you can act in the mode of nishkama karma yoga what krishna is speaking is primarily related to nishkama karma yoga do your duty dutifully dispassionately without any attachment to the fruits okay we discuss this now we'll move on to the next verse so krishna will continue this theme so he oh, will perform the duty yeah yes prabhu nitin prabhu uh, so prabhu uh, when we do the job at work mm-hmm. and is a competitive environment always manager would ask hey you need a visibility you need to compete hard with peers groups other groups mm-hmm. and things like that <clears throat> so does that karma get called into the mode of passion and if he has then how do we make this into the nishkam karma yoga so uh, i mean you know, they would ask for impact because that's what they measure everything in corporate world is measured by impact right don't look at the hard work they do and that is the duty they call for as long as you do your duty without trying to get the attention without due uh, diligence meaning uh, if suppose you you know your manager wants certain uh, work to be done in a specific way you do it but you do without any cheating meaning uh, you really do what uh, what is really needed and uh, as he recommended if you you know he recommends certain way you can just do it that way that is fine it's it's not against the principle you should not be um, uh, so that is the way your manager expects so that is just fulfilling the expectation but not on our on your own you are trying to do that because he may have certain plan for your career in terms of when he wants to you know get you promotion or whatever mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. you are just acting according to the plan that he your manager has for you mm-hmm. as long as you do it dutifully without you know trying to pull down others there are many things people try to do mm-hmm. act in any of those things you just do focus on your duty and do as he suggested that is perfectly all right uh, but not trying you know trying to achieve attention without you know due there is without due work uh, and trying to put down others those are all things that we should 100% avoid you know we should be 
yeah we should not play such games we should be true to ourselves thank you yeah Any hari krishna prabhu ji i have a question so um prabhu ji you said like you know act of giving without jeopardizing your own life right but there could be situations where like the other person's need is like more than yours or maybe it's your duty so you are doing this but you don't know the future and you know you are might put, put your life in jeopardy but you're still giving is that like do you accrue reaction for that or is that still considered in the mode of goodness so if you perform if you perform going out of your way okay uh-huh. comfort zone yeah i mean if you are really doing out of devotion just like you know think about bali maharaj he did exactly right mm-hmm. he you know he sacrificed his own life he was the from being the world of all the you know, three planetary systems he became nothing at the time his guru discards him his wife discards him his people discard him but still he did that but of course we are not at that level we should go according to who we are uh, we should not we should be uh, at least at this level i would say we should make sure you know, we are safeguarding ourselves and our family first before we uh, do beyond our capacity okay okay so we should focus on that and as we advance as we purify ourselves we strengthen our connection with krishna so much that we can uh step out of our comfort zone to do that at the time you can do that you can go beyond your comfort zone uh, but at this point it is perfectly all right to safeguard yourself before but again safeguarding means it doesn't mean that you don't extend at all you know in any way <laughs> you should extend yourself it should feel a little bit of pain if you are donating means you know you should feel some pain uh, uh like if you are earning say 400k or 300k or 200k or whatever right Uh, if you are only giving hundred dollar donation, it's not really a pinch. If you donate a thousand dollars, maybe little pinch. If you donate ten thousand dollars, it's a bigger pinch. But you should not donate. If you are getting two hundred k, you don't donate fifty k. That is beyond your comfort, right? Maybe five thousand. That may be okay. Thousand uh, is all right. Yeah, like that. So extend based on your capacity. uh if if you are completely uncomfortable don't do it sure. do according to your comfort and try to increase uh anything you give in the name of god i i mean we should not think in this term that i am speaking but comes 10 times 100% sure that that's how my personal experience and uh you know people i i know have the same experience but uh, yeah it, it it never goes waste yeah so now let's discuss this <clears throat> yogastah kur karmani sangam tyaktva dhananjaya siddhi asiddhayo samo bhutva samatvam yoga uchyate how to perform your duty so krishna performed how uh, you know what, what is the uh, way to perform now what is the consciousness in which you perform the duty is described in this verse perform your duty equipoised means balanced o arjuna abandoning all attachment to success or failure samo bhutva means equipoised so you should abandon all attachment to success or failure such an equanimity is called yoga so when you perform your duty you should forget that you are you know you may get a failure or a success because we identify with ourselves or oh, i'll be a failure or i will be a success but krishna is saying do it as a duty for me when you perform it as a duty for krishna everything is a success there is no nothing like a success or a failure at a material level because you are trying to please god that is how that's your consciousness right you are you are not disturbed when you when you face a failure otherwise many people uh, you know disheartened or lose confidence 
when they face failures in life but if they if they perform the duty as just a, you know i am just an instrument in the hand of god and i my duty is ultimate benefactor is god if we have that kind of a mindset you will never be upset you everything is a success for example shri prabhupad when uh, he his life is very fascinating if if you have any time you know if you get chance uh, you can read about it and there is a book called leela amrita which describes very well who uh, how many struggles he had to go through at an age of 70 years he marched down to on the in, so that was the instruction of his spiritual master uh, at the age of 40 but he was a family man so he was taking you know fulfilling the duties as a uh, like you know getting his children settled down uh, while himself preparing preparing himself to fulfill the desire of his spiritual master to spread the wisdom of gita all over the world so at the age of 70 when he when he felt he was completely ready for it he embarked on this journey to west to the west at the time he has literally no money not even money to even board a flight flight to come to america so he came in a in a commonwealth tier ship uh, you know so the ship is carrying you know goods from india to america so he just got one seat in that you know in that uh, good sh- good ship and in that in the journey he is doing the journey for the first time in a sea he had three heart attacks imagine if he got another heart attack you no know, two heart attacks if he got another heart attack he would have passed away literally he had no no dollars in his hand he is just 40 unchangeable rupees in his hand when he landed he did not know whether to go left or right he doesn't know he just had one contact who hopefully would come and you know see him when he reach reaches there so ultimately he reached there and you know that contact luckily came and for a few days he had a stay at his place but literally he came just to fulfill the desire of his spiritual master to spread the wisdom of gita and he had faced so many failures in the beginning in the first one year uh, he would write his you know bhagavatam like the one that we are reading in his typewriter to print them uh, to use that as the material for the classes but one day his typewriter was stolen and he was staying with a you know uh, with a hippie at the time uh, you know these young youth youth which has discarded the society in america they were all staying in you know places where nobody uh, you know no no sane man would stay because he is such a poor person he had to stay with a hippie and that hippie was on drugs all the time and uh, shrila propa would cook him cook for him uh, you know he had no other place so he had he had, you know this person kindly accepted to stay with but he was constantly on drugs on one on a winter evening he was heavy on drugs and he tried to attack and kill shila propa imagine out of nowhere this became this person who he staying with became violent so with just the dress he was wearing he had to you know come out of that place and stay in the cold that evening and luckily somebody else picked up and slowly he was wondering how he can put, he, so through all these failures he never complained oh krishna i am only trying to spread your wisdom why am i getting all these challenges he never complained he knows krishna has a perfect plan after a while he was slowly started uh, you know speaking gita to few interested people and then you know he was doing this spiritual bhajans 
Hare Krishna bhajans in the parks around there. And slowly people started taking interest. He had seen that this person is a very genuine person. He really wants our welfare. He could, they all, even though they're all, you know, drug addicts, they all felt that this personality is like our father. He really wants or could. And with that faith, and Prabhupada used to cook them nice kichdi uh, and vegetarian meal for them. And slowly they got attracted. And within a few years, the movement spread all over the America. And then it spread to Western countries. And all of this without, you know, any money, all of this was happening just because of sincere, dedicated followers that he got within a span of no time. He had no money. He did not attract with them with money or name, fame. His accent is also heavy Bengali. It's even difficult for them to understand, but still they could see the essence of this personality and they were attracted. So he was never thinking about his own success or failure. He was just doing as a service to Krishna. So when we have such commitment, then, you know, such equanimity is called yoga. Right? We should not be attached to success or failure. So ultimately, Krishna gave him such an amount of success. Nobody in the world has ever seen again such a success. Within the span of 10 years that he has stayed from his age of 69 to 79, where he, he went all around the world almost 14 times. And he started temples all over the world. By the time he left the world, there are 108 flourishing temples all over the world. Imagine. And he became such a famous personality. When he started, initially he started the movement in India, but you know, nobody encouraged him. But he knew that when America does something, everybody in the world would follow. So he, so it was a tactical thing that he came to America and when it spread wildly in America, all over in all the states, then immediately everybody invited him. India invited all the other, Europe, all the nations invited him. They started temples everywhere. So it spread like wildfire. Now we have about thousands of temples. Thousands. Imagine. And it is again very growing at a very high speed organically. Because people are seeing the benefit. They are you know, applying these teachings to themselves and seeing the benefit. As they get inspired, they would start another, you know, another center like that. So now we see so many temples in India, America. In India, you can, you know, in, in every Almost every town they have, every big town has a big temple in India. Even after Prabhupada left, most of the spiritual movements die off after the founder leaves the world. But with this movement, because this is having very strong roots in the eternal wisdom of Bhagavad Gita, and it is based on authoritative science, spiritual science, it is it is only ever expanding since then. Look at any other mission. They are only slowly going down and down after the founder leaves. But this movement is not like that. It is growing with double the strength after Prabhupada left the world. Even, you know, people like me, there are so many such teachers all over the world. They're teaching, you know, wildly, you know, all over the world. So that equanimity is important. Do not worry about what I would get as the result. So what is Arjuna's problem? Arjuna's problem is he is attached, he is attached to not doing his duty as the Kshatriya. He's a Kshatriya, he's duty bound to fight, but he's attached, he's his desire to not fight is also a kind of attachment. So that is, why is he thinking like I don't want to fight? He's thinking in terms of his own happiness and misery. Right? He's thinking, if I fight, I may end up being unhappy. So that's what Krishna is saying. 
do not abandon all attachment to success or failure don't consider that don't consider your happiness you are doing it as a duty on my instruction yeah because right let's read this krishna tells arjuna that he should act in yoga and what is that yoga yoga means to concentrate mind upon the supreme by controlling the ever disturbing senses and what is the supreme the supreme is the lord and because he himself is telling arjuna to fight arjuna has nothing to do with the results of the fight arjuna is considering what will be the result he should not because it is an instruction from krishna to fight he should just fight gain or victory or krishna's concern your your the works result that we perform like for example we do certain activity the success or failure in that activity is the concern of god that's how you should see arjuna is simply advised to act according to the dictation of krishna so that is the real yoga for us we may say oh we don't have krishna how do we do what how do we know what is the right action for us even though krishna is not there his perfect representatives are there is there are many spiritual masters or in at a lower level like you know at, like a, a guide like me or you know we can always consult somebody if we are in doubt if the instruction is clear for you then well and good if not you can always consult somebody uh, who knows maybe a little better than you no you can read this let's read this line this is interesting arjuna is a kshatriya and and as such he is participating in varnashrama dharma institution it is said that in vishnu purana it is said in the vishnu purana that in the varnashrama dharma the whole aim is to satisfy vishnu no one should satisfy himself as is the rule in the metal world but one should satisfy krishna so unless one satisfy krishna one cannot correctly observe the principles of varnashrama directly arjuna was advised to act as krishna told him duraina hi avaram karma buddhi yoga dhananjaya buddhau sharanam anvichcha kripana phala hetava kripana means miser don't be a miser krishna is saying O oh, Dhananjaya, keep all abominable activities far distant by devotion service, and in that consciousness, surrender unto the Lord. Those who want to enjoy the fruits of their act, their work, are misers. Who is a miser? A miser is a person who has the ability to spend. He has worked hard. He made a lot of money. but when his uh, children when it the time comes for joining his children for a good college he doesn't want to spend when there is a medical emergency he doesn't want to spend he would rather die because he is a miser he doesn't want to spend money right so krishna is saying don't be a miser miser is a person who has the capacity but he would restrict his capacity similarly all of us as human beings we all have this special ability to understand our real nature understand who we are and work towards that and perfect our life but if we don't if we are attached to the activities we do in this world then we are acting fruitlessly and thus we lose our potential the potential to perfect our life isn't it just like a miser uh, loses the potential to spend the money he has for the right cause at the right time now what is the uh, what is the benefit uh, you know if he you know he is not spending money for his wife when he, she is sick and he keeps the money and wife passes away what is the use of it and he has to suffer the entire life right so similarly a miser is a person who is attached to the fruits because when you become fruit mentality when you act with fruit mentality you would incur 
reaction, good or bad. So that would carry on you, carry you on in this world, in with good karma or bad karma. So Krishna is speaking. Such a person is like a miser, a miser who has the potential to have a good life but doesn't lead it. So similarly, a person who has a human form of life has the potential to perfect his life, but because he is attached to the fruits of act, fruits of his actions, he is. Bound to this world again and again, and also abominable activities that Krishna is referring to in this verse is basically the activities primarily prescribed in Vedas to achieve some kind of benefits. Vedas prescribe various pujas and various yagnas to achieve material fruits. Krishna says, "Don't go after them. Keep them all far away by performing devotion service. Focus on devotion service. Focus on pleasing God. Devotion service means not just doing bhajan or kirtan or chanting. That is a focus of time. That's a direct devotion service. But after that is done, what's your consciousness when you perform your duties at your office? Duties as a as a as a father, as a mother, as a child, or as a, a anybody, so you can. That is also counts as devotion service if you do it with proper consciousness. Yeah. Any questions on this? You can read this purport. One should therefore never desire to be the cause of work. Everything should be done in Krishna consciousness for satisfaction of Krishna. Misers do not know how to utilize the assets of riches which they acquire by good fortune or hard labor. One should spend all energies working in Krishna consciousness. That will make one's life successful. It will take time. Do not think that you, I, even I don't perfectly do it. It takes time. It takes years. If not, uh, if not months, so gradually, as you study every week, as you keep hearing, as you chant, slowly it, it naturally happens. We should not force ourselves to do it. Buddhi yukto jahati ha ubhe sukrita dushkrite tasmad yoga yajjasya yajjaswa. Yoga karma shu kaushalam. A man engaged in devotion service rids himself of both good and bad reactions, even in this life. Therefore, strive for yoga, which is the art of all work. So, Krishna is giving a final kind of a conclusion on how to perform your duty and what is the result of such duty. If you perform your you know your duties in proper consciousness or god consciousness what happens you would get rid of good and bad reactions not only for the actions that you are performing but for the actions you performed in the past krishna would wipe away your past reactions hmm? so when that happens then you have you can perfect your life in this very life and you never have to come back to this world. Therefore, strive for yoga, which is the art of all work. Strive for yoga, which is the art of all work. Art of work means how to perform work, right? It's the art of living. There is the art of dying. How to die is also an art. Dying in the right consciousness. That's what the teachings of Gita speaks specifically how to die how to eat how to everything can be done in the proper consciousness everything is an art hmm? how to eat is also an art how to keep yourself fit that is also an art hmm? we can perform yoga to keep our body fit uh, i mean asanas asanas part of the yoga uh, 
and then we can perform devotion service that is you know art of keeping your right consciousness you can perform your office duties in the right consciousness right there is also art of work how to be a good father that's also art so we can we can perform every activity with proper consciousness that becomes art of work and what is to our help bhagavad gita is to our help bhagavad gita gives us the perfect instructions on how to perform these activities properly in the right consciousness bhagavad gita is the manual to guide us in the in performing everything in the right way we don't perform our work in the right way because of our ignorance on how to do it rightly right that is the only reason right and by our ignorance we are forced by our own vasanas in the past right we have we all had certain pre previous lives that would make us into a certain uh, personality right now that we are you know we may be easily angered or we may be easily irritated or we may be uh, you know we all come with certain conditioning based on our past lives our vasanas are very specific to each of us but by studying gita by chanting the names of krishna hari krishna maha mantra slowly all these vasanas take back seat you know they don't act as act on us uh, as uh as heavily as they are right now as you can see you would see a, a sea of change in your own life as you start studying gita and start you know uh, chanting the holy name every single day it 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 brings a lot of transformation hmm? karma jam buddhi yukta hi phalam tyaktva manishin जन्म बंधाक्तिमयुक्ताज going back to godhead so what happens so krishna is in this verse tells what is the right art of work that will help one to get rid of both bad and good reactions and he assures by saying this is not new this is exactly how in the past people have lived we all want evidence right science works by evidence isn't it without evidence nobody can say this theory is proven right we all want evidence from the past so krishna is saying this is the way this is the right consciousness meaning equipoised somebody working be equipoised without desiring uh, without concerned about the good or bad reactions when a person performs like that his duties what happens so such great sages they are freed from the results of his work in the in this world and then what happens what is the result of such action they become free from the cycle of birth and death and attain what the beyond the state beyond all miseries kunta means a place of anxiety this material world is also called kunta kunta means a, a place of anxiety why kunta means a place where there is no anxiety why kunta literally means a place of no anxiety or a place beyond miseries right so one who leaves this world and goes back to that place he actually goes back to a place where there are no miseries and that happens when one frees himself you should have no baggage if you have any baggage you have to come back to this world 
means you have any desire to enjoy in this world you have to come to this world there is no escape from that is a nice purport you can all study yeah let's read this yadate moh kalilam buddhir vyatitarishayat yatita tarishyate tada ganta simir vedam srotavyasya sutasya cha when your intelligence has passed out of the dense forest of delusion you shall become indifferent to all that has been heard and all that is to be heard so krishna is actually specifically referring to the uh, the knowledge in the vedas the knowledge in the vedas you know some of the some of the knowledge there talks about a lot of fruitive activities you do this you get this result so krishna is saying when your intelligence has passed out of the dense forest of delusion you shall become indifferent to all that has been heard what is heard the knowledge that is heard from the vedas you become indifferent to that you don't worry about all of that you just focus on uh, the god consciousness right consciousness and all that is to be heard so here it talks about that there are many good examples in the lives of the great devotees of the lord of those who became indifferent to the rituals of the vedas simply by devotion service to the lord when a person factually understands krishna and his relationship with krishna he naturally becomes completely indifferent to the rituals of fruitive activities even though an experienced brahmana so madhavendra puri a great devotee and acharya in the line of devotees says this beautiful verse so the meaning is oh my prayers three times a day all glory to you oh bathing i have i offer my obeisances unto you oh demigods oh forefathers please excuse me for my inability to offer you my respects now wherever i sit i can remember the great descendant of yadu dynasty krishna wherever i sit i can remember him the enemy of kamsa and thereby i can free myself from all sinful bondages i think this is sufficient for me so basically one who is fully god conscious means he is able to see everything in relation to god at such a high consciousness that person he is not indebted to perform any other duties like demi gods otherwise you know we get rains from this demi gods we get all the supplies in this world from the uh, support of the demi gods just like all the ministries help us get all the necessities in this world similarly all the facilities nature nature provides is all provided by the demi gods we discussed this before we are we are all indebted to them which means that we need to perform certain duties to please them such as pujas and all but for one who is doing devotion service it's like watering the root when you water the root everybody is satisfied it naturally satisfies satisfies all the demigods the forefathers everybody is satisfied so you don't need to separately worship them you can worship krishna thereby you actually worship everyone included yeah so shruti viparitani vip sorry shruti viparitapanna te yadasta stasyati nischala samadhav achala buddhi tada yogam avapsyasi when your mind is no longer disturbed by the flowery language of the vedas and when it remains fixed in the strands of self realization then you will have attained the divine consciousness so when somebody reads vedas he would be very much attracted because there is promise of great you know great things in life you know many many things even in this world uh, we are attracted to so many things like you pass by a nice showroom of cars and you get attracted to certain car 
it's like that similar to uh, no similar to getting attracted to flowery language of vedas means the language that promises various things in this world to enjoy for one's own enjoyment when one comes to a stage understand stage of understanding that no all this you know acting for my own desire to enjoy in this world is ultimately not very good for me in my uh, for my long term good this is not really good when one one's mind is not disturbed by the attractions of this world whether it is material or even in vedas doesn't matter when one comes to that consciousness firmly fixed in achieving god no matter what i am here to achieve god i am going to i have spent roamed around in this world for millions of lifetimes but this one lifetime i want to dedicate for self realization when one becomes so serious and is not distracted by any other material goals or you know any other type of you know the vedic knowledge when he firmly fixes his consciousness on god then krishna says you will have attained the divine consciousness that is the right consciousness when one becomes so fixed up in life okay so we will end it here now the next so this ends the section of nishkama karma yoga and how to perform and what is the consciousness of a person who performs such nishkama karma yoga and how he behaves now arjuna would ask certain questions on sthita pragna a very nice section would start after this and krishna would answer each of these questions in the next uh, few verses after this so we will end here today we had a very good participation about 19 people attended i uh, hope this continues in the future classes thank you all for joining uh, i hope uh, you had a lot quiz we'll do more quizzes like this okay you keep reading further sections of introduction we'll end the class here thank you all for joining